Hey, so I finished my mob head farm for 1.17 and made some changes to the design so I thought I'd make a new video. And I also pulled it into a creative world so that I can put a uh, world download in the description. So we'll start with a demo of the inside and then we'll go out and look at some of the redstone. Um, so that button I just flicked turns it on and summons your mob types here. And that just diverts them from the mob farm that's up there that you would you would just keep that mob farm running so that you get your drops, but when you have creepers in the system, which is detected by these yellow lights, or indicated by these yellow lights rather, so if you're running around in your base and you run past this and you have yellow lights right here, it means you have charged creepers. Um, so you could turn it on at that point, get your three mob types here, select the one you want. So if we want a skeleton head, we hit that guy. If we want a creeper head, and so forth. We'll start with a zombie. And you've got a series of chests around it. This one holds your armor. It's important to be invisible when you use this thing. And you're not invisible if you're wearing armor. And this, the, the uh, system will throw the invisibility potion at you automatically, but that blinking light indicates that we are out of it. There's a dispenser hidden behind this uh, block and there's no way to click on the dispenser to check to see if there's potion in it so that light blinks to tell us that it's empty so we'll throw the invisibility potions in there and they get sucked up into the system and registered all right and then we need a flint and steel and then the final chest is where the heads are going to go once we get them and we'll summon our creeper. And then we hit it again. Light him. He blows up. In a minute we'll get another zombie. And then we'll get a head. And that little ding indicates that our head has arrived. Um, nah. He's on fire because we ported this over from my real underground world into a creative world, so I haven't blocked all the light perfectly well up there. Um, so, just ignore that. <laughs> if you put this in your survival world, that wouldn't necessarily happen. Um, when we hit this button to summon the next creeper, we are not going to get hit with another invisibility potion. We don't want to, because we're already invisible. Oh no. Uh, and we will be for the next uh, eight minutes, seven minutes. So there's a cooldown timer up there that tracks that, and it won't hit us with another invisibility potion until it's been uh, eight minutes. And I just realized we're not in survival, so just to show that this works in survival, um, we'll switch to that. So we don't get hit with another invisibility. We do that. And in just a minute, we'll get a new skeleton loaded in. There he is. And the ding indicates that our skull has arrived. Alright, and when we're done, turn the system off. These guys get purged. That's to free up your mob cap, because like I said, this is a mob farm. Uh, it's designed to be attached to a mob farm, so when you're not using it, you want your mob cap freed up so that all the mobs can go through the system and uh, fall to their death over your hoppers and have their items collected. Um, and then these lights indicate that we have creepers in there. If you don't want those creepers tying up your mob cap, like if we're done getting mob, hebs, mob, mob heads and we have a bunch of creepers down there, we don't want them tying up our mob cap. So we can hit this little button hidden on the side here, and that activates a clock that starts dis disposing of them. Uh, we'll go back into creative here and take a better take a closer look at that. This, What that did is it started a clock right there that activates a dispenser and once there are no more creepers that piston moves and breaks the clock and we're back to square one. Uh, at least uh, and then right there that light being off tells us that uh, we're totally empty. Like that lights off so we don't have any creepers down here. That lights off which means we don't have any creepers over there. And now we'll start a storm and we'll look at some of the redstone. 
Um, the whole point of this thing is to turn on and create charged creepers automatically. So you can be wandering around your base doing stuff, and a thunderstorm starts, and way up here, these lightning rods, as soon as they get struck by lightning, the system starts rerouting your creepers over to a holding container, and every time a lightning strike hits, they get charged, dropped, and collected where we saw them just a moment ago. Um, this cat is here... I'll explain that later. <laughs> He's there for a reason. Uh, Alright, that should have uh, that should have done it. Did that do it? Are we going now? Yeah, we're going. Alright, so the next creepers that come up through here should go into that holding container. Um, there's one flaw here that you might see. It's very rare, but witches go in here at the moment. I have a plan to filter them out, but um, it's crazy rare, so hasn't happened yet. Um, and then something else that might crop up is skeleton traps. Skeleton horses will randomly spawn all over here. I have no idea what to do about it. It doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't stop the system from working, so uh, I haven't done anything, but if anybody has any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Uh, all this stuff over here, what this is doing is attempting to turn the system off. Lightning storm detectors are not super reliable in my view. The, the daylight sensor systems don't work at night and the waterlogged uh, the, the farmland detectors are really slow to update. The storm will have been over for a really long time and you'd still have creepers getting diverted over to, over to this. So what I've got here is basically an hourglass that ticks down. Right now it has two redstone dust in it. As soon as this hopper clock cycles, uh, the uh, hourglass will, the redstone dust here will tick into this guy. And if this reaches zero, it'll turn this off and stop attempting to charge creepers. But while the hourglass is ticking out, while this is attempting to, to be pushed over here, every time there's a lightning strike, these redstone here get pushed back into this dispenser here, essentially filling the hourglass back up. So uh, if this hourglass gets empty, that turns off, but every time that gets struck by lightning, it fills the hourglass back up, and that keeps the system on during a lightning storm. Um, if uh, the storm ends, then there will be too few lightning strikes for the... Uh, uh, for the hourglass and it'll uh, there will be no lightning strikes and the hourglass will run out and the system will turn off. Uh, so we should be... I don't know why we're not getting any creepers. Did we turn this thing off? We did. Son of a gun. We need this thing on. <laughs> oh, that was dumb. Alright. Uh... For the sake of demonstration, we're gonna we're gonna spam some creepers into this thing. Um, you can see them coming through the system, but uh, we will just throw them in, and you'll see more now that it's on. <laughs> All right, so we wait for a lightning strike now. There we go, right on cue. These guys get funneled aside. They're dropping down to that collection bin we already saw. And more will be uh, funneled into there as soon as they catch up. There they are. In fact, you'll, you can see here the, the skeletons don't swim. So they keep right on going, and the, the zombie, uh, or the creepers rather, get funneled over here. And then when there's a lightning strike, they'll get hit. And that's plenty, so we'll go to weather clear now. And like I said, this hourglass is going to continue trying to pump out... Uh, I know that's an etho hopper, by the way. An hourglass is just a, a better visual. Um, as soon as this gets down to zero redstone dust, which I'm going to simulate, so that would be one cycle of the etho hopper clock. That would be two cycles of the etho hopper clock. And that would be three. And bam, this has turned.
turned off, so to speak. And now the uncharged creepers uh, need to be funneled back into the system. That's where our traffic cop comes into play. You can see here how they get bottlenecked like this. If that cat isn't there, they'll stay like that forever. It's super annoying. So now they're just falling to their death like they normally would. Um, we don't want them going this way because they would pollute the charged creepers that we have waiting down there. Um, and that guy, he'll, he'll wander off eventually. He's, occasionally one of them gets stuck there. So now if we go down here, we now have... Uh, see, they all despawned because we were up there. Um, so that's annoying, but we'll just put, put a bunch in there real quick. This is where those guys would have landed, and I assure you that if you're down here where you're supposed to be while this thing is running, everything works out, but if you're up there where you're not supposed to be, uh, you get some despawn. And now we have a quote-unquote charged creeper. That guy's not charged, obviously, but whatever. Um, and. Uh, you'll notice that the containers here are empty now. That's because they despawned as well. And that might happen, actually. If you've got this thing on and you're waiting for creepers, but you run over here to some other part of your base and you come up, come back, and you've got one, two, or three of these guys despawned, you need to reload it. So I hit a button up here that's sort of like a maintenance reload button. Any of the maintenance -y buttons are sort of hidden like that. Um, and uh, like that guy there, and then the, the regular buttons that are actually pressed to work the system are uh, more more apparent. But anyway, that's the that's pretty much the whole thing. I can't think of anything else to show. Turning it off again purges that, and hitting that will purge this so that these lights turn off. These are on again because there are creepers there. And as soon as they're all gone, uh, those lights there on either side will turn off. So, anyway, that's that.